Hi, I'm Denis Gagné from Trizotech, and I'm going to talk about becoming digital. So digital organizations are characterized by the fact that information technology affects all aspects of their business model, not just the back office. We've talked about the fact there's a digital revolution, and it's fueled by rapid technology adoption, changing customer behavior, and increasing competition. This is a paradigm shift that no organization can really escape. Digital transformation is affecting all organization, not only digital, born digital organization, but every organization from every industry. Some industries have already transitioned and others are in the process of transitioning. Your organization should look at thriving rather than just surviving during this revolution. You must have the foresight to adapt in this transformation that's going on. Value creation and benefit to the customer should shape your digital transformation. Basically, it's not just about operational effectiveness, but you have to look at both access of customer to the benefit and value to your organization. In doing so, you have to create new business model and new form of customer engagement by leveraging your knowledge worker. This means improving, innovating, and transforming your organization. By improving, what we're talking about is doing the same thing but better. When we're talking about innovation, we're talking about doing new things. And when we're talking about transforming, we're talking about doing new things that make the old way obsolete. So companies must define their digital strategy. If not, they're going to be left behind. So it's the basic idea of you have to plan the flight. There's no chart that exists on how to do digital transformation. But as we all know, the key is execution. So moving to address these opportunity can involve a lot of difficult change for an organization, either within or outside the organization. You gotta be careful not to confuse digital transformation with adopting and spending more in new technology. It is fueled by the introdu introduction of new, uh, new technology, but it's not the core goal. You have to make sure to involve all the different stakeholders, both inside and outside stakeholders, and make sure that their own perspective contribute to the overall transition and transformation of the organization. Very importantly, you have to envision the future. You have to align your strategy and the goals of where you want to be with your operational model. So at Trizotech, we have a tool that we call the Discovery Accelerator that allow you to align your strategy, your goal, to your operation. And this alignment is fueled by three core management uh, approach. Process management, case management, and decision management. So process management is about, it's a discipline approach to allow your organization to become more efficient. So we have a tool that we call the BPMN modeler, which is a tool that allows you to capture your business processes and ensure effectiveness and efficiency there. Case management represents a paradigm shift on how to support knowledge intensive work. For that, we have a tool that we call the CMMN modeler, which uses the CMMN new standard, the case management model annotation. Decision management is about an increase in your organization agility and adaptability by defining the requirement of your decision and the logic of your decision. For that, we have a tool that we call the DMN modeler. And all these tools from the Trizotech set uh, are built upon what we call the digital enterprise graph. And the digital enterprise graph is basically a way to create a semantic model of your organization. We have a tool that we call the Insight Analyzer, and the Insight Analyzer uses this digital graph as first class citizen to provide you with some insight and deeper meaningful view of what's going on or what's there in your organization. And as we all know, one of the most powerful way to ensure success in any project is to create a shared vision. So we have a tool that we call the communicator, and this tool allow you to share these model and goals. So trizotech has got a new generation of application that are all web-based to enable the digital transformation. It allow you to innovate, improve, and transform your organization.
And now for something totally different. So the marketing part is done. So let me uh, talk to you a little bit about the suite. So what we have is we have a suite of applications. So rather than having one huge integrated IDE approach, we decided to go in an approach that is very similar to what you have at Microsoft Office Suite. So we have all the different tools that provide you a specific, you know, address one concern, but is all integrated together. So we have all these different tools. And the tool I want to talk about to you today is what we call the communicator. And the communicator is based on our, what we call the animation technology. The animation technology is a way to emulate the execution semantic of all these models. And we have a fully integrated model. So here I am in the communicator and I have a BPMN model, which is uh, a customer support process with escalation. And if you look at my model here, I have a, a task and then I have the potential of going doing escal escalation and answering back to my customer. And in here, I have a case task. And I can go through it statically. So now I can just go to the case model. And here I have a case model for roadside assistance. So if my customer support gets a ticket and it's somebody that's stuck on the road, then it becomes very knowledge intensive and very adaptive. So I'm using a case to capture this using CMMN. And you can see that in here, and I guess it's clear enough. In here, I have a couple of decision tasks. And if I go into this decision task, then I have my DMN requirement diagram for this decision. And I can even go into and get my decision logic for implementing that decision. And I can, you know, perk right back out of this and come back to my source. Now, I was also talking about what we call the digital enter enterprise graph. The digital enterprise graph is a way not only to interconnect all these models together, but also external sources. So for example, if I come here on this task, um, I can see different data. There's not much data there. Uh, I have an attachment which is an issue report mock-up of what that screen could be. Um, I also have a semantic link that this particular task is linked to an SOA architecture, and in particular, it's linked to the ticketing service out of my ticketing system that is defined in a Sparks EA enterprise architecture. So now, my business people and my IT people can interconnect all their work now, here I'm showing an example of Spark. This could be case-wise, this could be true, this could be any uh, enterprise architecture tool. And it can also be uh, any reference model. So this could be the APQC reference model that you want to align with, so it allows you to align with everything. And so this is a static way. Now, what's very interesting is we can also validate dynamically this model. So now I've made sure that this is the model that I think that I want. And with our animation technology, I can walk through this full integrated environment. There's three use cases in increasing value that I can do with that. The first one, which is of less value but valuable, is learn the actual language. So by using this animation, I can run through and make sure, do I understand BPMN? And do I understand how it behaves? And I go from here. And let's say I want to escalate this. Then I'm going to send my customer a message telling him I'm escalating it. I'm going to send it down. And then let's say that first level actually uh, provides the answer. Then I get my answer back. And then I can advise my client about the answer and then just complete my process. So this is a way indirectly to learn the language, so, or learn the dynamic aspect of the language. So that's the first use case. The second use case is to validate that the model you drew, or the model you created, is actually behaving like you believe 
it, it will behave. Uh, we had a situation with a large insurance company where they already had BPMN model. They in, put it into the, the tool. Uh, they were doing a trial, a 30-day trial. And then they contacted us to report a bug on our tool because they say, well, you know, it never goes into that branch. Well, guess what? <laughs> so here's a process that's been deployed for over two years. Their logic was incorrect. The BPMN logic was incorrect. That was a dead branch of their process. But they never, because when they read through, it seems like it was, you know, because the label said turn left, they didn't realize that they was turning right. So, so that's a second use case, is to ensure that the dynamic behavior of your model is valid. The third use case, which has much more value, is this become a rich multimedia environment to communicate this model either to insider or outsiders or, or partner. So now I can run this model and as I get in here and I do this get issue, here's my mockup. So this is a mockup. It could be any media rich thing. Um, then I go into this. I have a roadside assistance situation. So I go in here. This is going to take me into that case. So let me talk a little bit about CMMN here because it's probably not as known to everybody. So CMMN basically what you have is a context. So I'm managing a context. So the case file model, the case, the case model giving me a context I'm managing. And what I'm looking for within that context are events that are either generating or happening, or I'm looking for new data or new pieces of information. So we have in CMMN, we have an ECA uh, execution semantic, event, condition, action. But one particular thing about this ECA is that it's an either or. So it can be just event action, it can be just condition action, or it can be just action. So you can have the full gamut of the ECA, which is pretty innovative nowadays. So if I go into here, and when I look at a CMMN model, it's a declarative model. So there is no read it left to right or how this all chained together. This is a series of declaration on how I react to different events. So to give you a little sense, here for example, I have a non part that we call, which is the event part. I'm saying that I'm going to react on this creation of this new issue report. And if my condition is met, then I'm going to do this action. And that's the pattern you have there. And we have the notion of discretionary activities, or in this case, a discretionary stage, which can be added in at runtime. So at runtime, the knowledge worker can change the full dynamic of what's going on and adapt to the situation. And we have the notion of milestones, which can guide the stepping through of this case and where you are in the case. So if I start this in the animator, so I got my issue report from customer support, uh, here, there's no condition to run it. So I'm going to make an assessment of where to actually do this repair. My assessment is going to be submitted to my decision system. I'm going to run this decision. And depending on what I filled up in my form, so I'll say this is a multi-vehicle accident. And I'll say, don't send it. So the knowledge worker said, don't send it to the shop. I'm going to run this, and it's giving me a conclusion to send it to the shop. And why is that? Well, basically because our system has some guardrails that says, here's my rule, and that's the rule that fired. If it's a multi-vehicle accident, I don't care about what anybody thinks. It's going to the shop, and it's providing that conclusion there. So now. I have a report on my accident, and I have my collision report. My collision report is going to feed into another decision, which is how do we split the cost of these repair? And it's based on the damage type responsible. 
and let's look at it from the table. And if I run this and I say, well, I have a silver member and it's a third party that's responsible and it's an engine problem, then you see we're going to split EU rent will pay 80% of the bill and the renter will pay 20% of the bill. So we have the full uh, decision that we can run there. And once I complete this, now one of the things I didn't talk about is if you notice here I have this activity and you see here you have the trace of the case. Now this can be very different because at any time the end user can disclaim, uh, dismiss the claim and then my claim is terminated. So this allows to be very reactive to external condition and I can restart this claim uh, and you see, and let me see if I can zoom out a little bit to tell you, but you'll see, well, you see I have my little thing here that this case is running. Now when you look at a CMMN model, the thing you have to look for are the required activities. Because that's basically what's guiding what must be done. Now, a lot of people don't like that, but in CMMN, must be done means must be done unless terminated. So in CMMN, everything is optional. There's nothing that is absolutely, absolutely required. But you'll notice that as soon as I'll do, so let me move into here. So let's say that I have, and this is based on a CMIS model in the back. So let's say without me doing anything, this piece of information is added into the database or into the folder of the case. This enables this and it says, well, and my condition is if repair is on location, when that condition is fulfilled, then it's changed the tire. So now, here's a video on how to change a tire on the side of the road. Uh, and then I can actually walk through and say, okay, so this is repaired. The car is repaired, so my milestone car repaired is complete. And you see here, but I must have my report written. And once my report is written, then I can terminate this case. So there's all kinds of different patterns that can happen there. For example, I could at any time in here, so if I run this, at any time, the knowledge worker may decide that changing the car I want to add this to the possibility and I may do validate that the car is responsible and then you see that within the context of discretionarily deciding to change the car, once I get into there, I must change that car. Well, this is the logic I gave to this particular example uh, and I can actually complete this which make this stage completes, then I can complete this stage uh, then if I do this required task here and I do my repair because this is a required stage so you see here this stage must done. from the moment all the required elements are done then I have the possibility of closing the stage so the stage becomes available to be closed once all this is done so then I can attach you know screen capture mock-ups and everything uh, to validate what we're going to do. I can put multimedia if I'm communicating for client onboarding or for communicating to the outside how things are done, but it's based on the actual model that is actually running in the engine. And that's a good part of my demo, but there's a bonus track which Bruce asked me to do, which is, this is beta, but in our DMN modeler now, we have full conformance level to level three. So we can capture, so this is the a mortgage recommender that Gil modeled first and then Bruce retook in his book. And so in here, I have a structured decision. I can go to the decision logic and you can see that I can have actual uh, different type of box expression. I have decision tables. I have uh, another decision table. I have a relation table here, uh, I can create a function call, 
and we have the full capability of the modeling. And we also have under the app with our partner Idiom is we can actually take any piece of logic of decision and generate two things. One thing is a cloud service and then you get a REST API that you can actually consume that decision service at any level of abstraction. Or we can generate an executable embeddable code, so a Java or C sharp code that you can take and embed that decision logic right into any device or any system. And this is uh, in strong beta right now. Uh, so this should be coming out uh, soon.